The road to the MLB is a very long and hard road. Most people can't walk this road, but in the case of Scott Sanders, he played in the MLB for six years, and he did some very great things. The things I went through to get to MLB, it, it all started back in Thibodeau, back in Pelche Park when I, was, I started playing baseball when I, was, when I was seven years old. You know, I went, um, you know, I went, I, I went, I love basketball. Basketball is my first love, and, and I just played baseball to, during the summer to get me back to basketball season, but but I, uh, I was naturally gifted in baseball, so so I did. I, I, when at a young age, I did a lot of things came easy to me. So, it, but it took me a long time until I got to, to college to realize that the hard work and the, the efforts that I had to put in to, to, to take myself to a different level. Because once I got to college, my, my baseball coach taught me how to play basketball at Nichols. So I, I knew once I decided to, to, to give up my love, which was basketball, that I had to put my heart and soul into baseball. Because if I felt I didn't make it in baseball, I would always look back and regret giving up basketball for baseball. But once I got to Nichols, you know, I, I basically had to start putting in the time, effort between study hall and running at five in the morning and, and studying and, and all the hard practices we, we had to put in, you know, it, that carried me over to pro ball. Once I got to pro ball, you know, then it became a job. So once it became a job, it basically, it, it's, it's just your life. You know, you, you eat, sleep, and drink baseball. You know, uh, and there's no off season. You know, I'd take two weeks off once the season ended, but once once two weeks off and I rested my body, I was back in the gym. I was trying to get faster. I was trying to get stronger. I was trying to do the little things that would make a difference to make, to make me become a major league baseball player. I tell you, being a professional athlete, there's a lot of uh, tough times, believe it or not, that come with it with family, because obviously you're gone a lot. You know, I would basically, I would, I would leave uh, mid-February uh, for spring training, which is usually six weeks. When my kids were young, they get to come to spring training and enjoy it with me. But as they got older and got to school, I would, you know, you're alone a lot. So your kids are at home. Uh, you know, going to school and doing their everyday life, whereas and, and you're away, which you're doing, you're, you're living your dream, playing professional, you know, professional sports, but it's really tough on the, on the family life because you don't get to see them that much. Then, finally, if they do get to come out and see you, you know, we we go on every every ten days, you go on a road trip, you know. So so, I got to, I, luckily when I played, my kids were a little bit younger, so I didn't I didn't I got to still see most of their activities at school and sports because I retired at the age of 36. When my oldest, Scotty Jr., was eight years old, so I mean, I got to coach him from when he was eight all the way through high school, which I coached my son Cameron as well, which was a blessing. But it's just really, really tough. Uh, the travel, you know, you're traveling a lot, you're going a lot, you know, you're going from city to city, and, and obviously, also in the minor leagues, um, it's not easy as well because you're in smaller cities, um, and sometimes you stay in it. Not, not not very nice hotels. Sometimes you do stay in nice hotels, but you're riding buses, you know. So there's a lot of strife, a lot of tough uh, strifes that you have to put up with, but they do that to make you want to get to the big leagues faster and, and stay there because once you get to the big leagues, obviously you're in big cities, flying on planes and staying in nice hotels. After playing his six years in the MLB, Scott wanted to continue with the sport. He became a pitching coach to help inspire younger players to hopefully get them to where he was one day. My life after uh, Major League Baseball, was I, I retired at, I think I was about 30, 34 years old. And um, first I went and worked for my agent out, out in Los Angeles for a couple of years. And I thought that's what my career path was going to be. And, and I enjoyed it, but it just wasn't what I, what I thought. Wasn't, it didn't really drive me to, to, to what I wanted. So I came, I moved back to Louisiana in 2004, I opened up the Sanders Baseball and Softball Academy. I did that for about 12 years. In the middle of that, I also I did some oil field sales for nine years, and I, I, that really I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed the the passion of going out and selling, and the, the it was something new. So it took a lot of baseball came to me very easy. I, I did have to work hard, don't get me wrong, but it came very easy to me. Uh, whereas all of a sudden, I took a brand new career path and and went on and and, and started selling oil field sales, and then. I end up selling my baseball academy. I still do pitching lessons today, uh, which I enjoy because I love I love the passion of teaching and coaching and taking kids and giving them the knowledge that uh, the guy God gave me a gift to, to teach and, and, and with baseball. So I really enjoy doing that. Now I'm the regional director for Janet King uh, here in South Louisiana. I run the, the South Louisiana region. I go out and do sales and also uh, have a staff of two underneath me and 12 franchise owners that I go out every day and try to get business for them and keep their keep their business rolling and, and, and profitable and I love every day of my life, so very blessed. My, my motivation uh, through, through baseball and professional, professional uh, sports was, was my, my um, I, I didn't like to fail. There's nothing, everything I do in life, I, I, 
I, I just hate to fail. You know what I mean? There's some days when you lose and you can learn from your losses, but to fail is 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 um, you know letting your teammates down, letting your family down, letting your letting letting the people who love you down. You know, my father was my role model growing up. He um, from the from the day I was born to to still today, he's the person I look up to. I mean, I, there's a lot of guys I idolize who are professional athletes, but my dad was my was my push. He was my my mentor, he was a person who, who taught me from, from a young age, you know, be a leader, let people follow you instead of being that follower, you know. So, um, you know, my motivation was to basically every day I, want, I wanted to look back and say, what did you do today to make yourself better, to prepare yourself for tomorrow? You know, when it comes to sports and, and athletics, it's hard to do because every day is a grind and every day is not a great day. You can go out, I mean, I've, I've been, I've pitched in front of 50,000 people and given up 10 runs, you know. Uh, I actually better better yeah you know, uh, twelve runs in, in four innings one time, and the crazy thing was that same team a year earlier I went nine innings one run one one hit no runs against the same team so I went from I was in Detroit I faced the Texas Rangers I threw a one hitter nine innings shut out shut out complete game shut out and then uh, the next season the first month of the next season I, once again with Detroit I go to uh, Texas this time is at Texas. And I go four innings, 16 hits, 12 runs, and just get absolutely shelled. And honestly, there was no difference in the two days. The difference is one day everything I threw worked out and, and, and had had good good a good a good end result. And the next time, it didn't matter what I threw, it didn't happen. But but those are the things that that when it comes to motivation, you have to come you have to find a motivation within to make you say, hey, what did I do today that made me that bad or made me that good? Some days you find it, some days you don't. But the one thing about sports is that you have to get up the next day, you have to grind like the the, the next day after I gave up those twelve runs, I mean I got up and I, I ran for twenty five minutes. I rode the bike for two hours. I just I tortured my body because I was so upset at myself because I knew I, there's nothing I could have probably done different to make a difference but but I just knew that I wasn't going to let that day define me, so I was going to work harder to make sure that next time out I was going to be better. And uh, the motivation, honestly, a lot of it just comes from within. You know, from a young kid, I was always my dad was always drew, drew, drove into me to be the best you can be, work as hard as you can, and just give your best effort. You know what I mean? And, and the thing about it, that the motivation, I, I was always self motivated. Some people need motivation from with from from out outside of their themselves and you know in their in their realm, but I always found I always found motivation from within to, to push myself to try to be the best.